Courtney Anders here with one of the coolest rides at the World Series of Pearl Mott, a good buddy of mine, Wes Goddard, and he loves being on camera, so this is going to be a really, really <laughs> special one to me, but one of the most unique cars out here, but before we get into this car, the process of getting invited to the World Series of Pearl Mott, did you think that you were going to be on this list? Uh, no, no. It's, uh, and when I did get the call, like it's that was the greatest day of my life, like that was unbelievable. Tell me a little bit about your life at home. You and Sandy, you guys live, breathe, everything racing. What's the, what built the passion? We've always been racers, right? Like when I was seven years old, we used to uh, start a race in go-karts, right? And then uh, we got out of that. I ran a stock car for a little bit and didn't like that because you're just smashing everything up. And then we got into drag racing and uh, at least you can build something cool and it kind of stays cool without getting smashed all the time, so. <laughs> Your talents, you are a man of many talents. You are a MacGyver of sorts, <laughs> fabrication, everything. When you dreamt this car up, give me the vision and your talents that kind of put into to making this thing happen. But I was gonna buy a 63 Vet before I bought this thing and uh, my buddy called me and he found a 58 Nash in a barn and it's like, okay, cool, I gotta buy this thing. And it was in a barn for 30, 32 years or something. And I got it home, sat it there out in the driveway, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this thing. It's so ugly. So it sat there for a month, and I was eating dinner one day, and I drew it on an envelope. This is what the car is going to look like, and that's what we did. You just said off camera, I said you did most of this with your own hands, right? And you said all of it. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the process and, and the grueling nature of it, or was it kind of exciting for you to watch this thing literally be built from the ground up? It's, uh, I had to build everything because I can't afford to get somebody to do it for me. So you got to do it yourself, right? And learn how to do it yourself. So I learned how to do everything myself. So nobody's really taught me how to do anything. You just do it. How long did it take you? That car took me two years to the day to build that thing from the ground up. So this is unique, right? The reason I wanted to do this on a car feature, one, I love you, two, <laughs> It is one of the most unique cars out here. It doesn't matter if somebody thinks it's cool, if they think it's ugly, if they think it's weird, they look at it. Yeah. Did you have that intent when you made when you built this car? I just always wanted something different. I'm not the normal guy, right? I just want something weird. And uh, when I built the car, all I wanted to do was go 200 miles an hour in it. And we did it the first weekend out. So it's like, okay. And then you just keep picking away at it. And... Under the hood. Tell me about what's under the hood. It's a 510 Big Chev, uh, twin 88 precisions on it, and, uh, and a Hutch Power Glide. That's the only thing I don't build. The wheelbase here. 101. 101. What's the appeal to that for you? I built it. I always built small cars because I always had a small shop, so I couldn't build a big car. So. <laughs> Inside that thing, right? Like I, it's in the staging lanes. I hadn't even seen you in it yet. I don't know if my legs could fit in there. Oh, you're gonna get in it. Oh, I'm gonna get in yeah, it? Yeah, you're getting in it. The inside <laughs> of this thing, being compact in there, going as fast as you do, it's gotta feel a little bit different. Almost like I said, running junior dragsters, we only went 80, 85 miles an hour, but yeah. being that tight and close to the ground, I felt like I was going faster. Same kind of deal? Yeah, it's just, I don't know. You're so focused on the hand, like it don't matter. Like, it don't matter. What's the fan reaction, the internet reaction? When you guys announced you were coming here, the internet blew up. Oh yeah. like. The support I've had, like, it's unbelievable, but right? I can't thank Spencer Hyde, Peter Hyde, uh, Mike Everett, Ken Everett, right? Like, they drug all my stuff here, so that's cool. I can't thank them enough. Like, it's just, I don't know what to say. What would be the best case scenario for you this weekend? I know that everybody wants to win this deal, but I feel like as excited as you were to get invited, coming here, getting to exhibit what you do, getting to support Spencer, what would be a great weekend to walk away for, for West Goddard? If I can qualify, that's goal number one. And everything else is icing on the cake, so. Perfect. Well, thanks for letting us take a look oh, at no, your car. Get in there. Oh, I gotta get in? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, I'm nervous. You'll figure out why the gas pedal's crooked. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I wondered why the gas pedal was crooked. Your knee don't fit. Exactly. There's no way your knee can go in here. I feel like I'm in a simulator video game. This is one of the coolest, most unique things I've ever seen in my life, Wes. Kudos to you. All right, bye. <laughs>